Hello everyone, welcome back to making my trap work, uh, part two. So last time you saw me I was staining my, wood, uh, my wooden sleepers with uh, some Colron Jacobean dark oak wood dye. So I've given them a few more coats. Uh, that one there has had three coats in total and then that one's had two coats so you get sort of like a, a bit of variation between them not a huge amount but a bit so I'm going to show you what I do with them next so here's one of my sections of trap work it's on 3mm cork and it's print you know like I said made in template printed it out cut it out took it down and that's going on the right way. So, I've grabbed 25 of those sleepers that are painted. So now all I've got to do is glue them down. So I'm going to be using some Evo stick uh, waterproof wood adhesive. Um, just so they don't have any chance of coming up as I'm trying to, uh, you know, when I soak them with like PVA and water mix or something for the ballast or something. So I'm just going to make a few holes in this. Um, and what I'll do for that is just like use some nails and just, just put some holes just so that some glue has got a chance of going down through the thin cardboard and into the cork so it just holds them even that bit firmer so I'll just do that right now okay so I've made a few little holes and now I'm just going to start with the wood glue putting a little bit on not too much in fact what I have been doing is if I can find it in this messy workbench it's been just using a, a brush sometimes just to take some of the excess off you just don't want to get everywhere and then to pit any sleeper out and just stick it down within the lines, it's nice and easy, like so. And now what I'll do is I'll do that 24 more times, just for this one little bit. And in the end... Should just go as well to get this done. So I won't bore you with watching me <laughs> do all of these, so I'll just skip ahead until I finish it. all 25 sleepers down I'm now going to leave this overnight so the glue sort of can set but overall you can sort of see the sort of effect that it's starting to get with the slightly different colours uh, so I'll come back hopefully in the morning and uh, show you the next step Okay, so this is now completely dried. Um, so 
the next step is to hopefully get some rail down. So first of all, I'll take a length of rail. I've got a um, bullhead rail here, Co75. Um, I got this from CNL Fine Scale. It's their special uh, track. That's I think it's got a little bit more nickel or something. It, either way, it it comes out a little bit more, um, well, a little bit less yellow, like uh, you get with Pico track. So apparently it's more protective. I don't know, but anyway, it's where I bought the track from. I'm seeing how far it's gone. Anyway. So what I'll do first is I'll cut this off and, I, and what I'll do is I'll, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll leave a little bit extra and this allows me just to file some bits down and, and cut it off though. You, you'll see in a bit what I mean when I explain it all. So I'll cut two bits off like that. Over bits when you're doing this. So, the first job to do is to file off part of the end. So, for this, what I've got here is a blade filing jig, and this is what I'll use for the points for um, for making the blades. Hopefully, if all goes well. Uh, so what I'm just going to use this is just use this to sort of file a point on this um, bit of rail. So what I'll do first is just loosen this off a bit, slide the bit of rail through. Don't know if you can be able to see this or not, but. And you'll, you'll see why I'm going to do this in a minute. So all I do now is I take a file. And I don't know which is the best way to do this. You might, you might struggle to see this. But all I'm going to do is take a file and just file over it. And the whole point of this is I've got to thread something onto the rail soon. And it's a lot easier to do that when the end has been filed down. Which is because they're, they're only like um, little bits of... Uh, plastic so yeah. so as you can probably not say um that end is now filed down nicely. Hopefully that should make it a bit easier. I won't show you doing the other one. You've probably seen me do one so you know how it goes. So <clears throat> next is the chairs and these are what hold the track down to the sleepers. So you get I bought these from uh, CNL fine scale as well, and these are three bolt chairs. Um, you probably can't pick up the the detail. I don't know if it can or not. Um, you get different sorts. Um, 
I'll show you how. There's some two bolt chairs there. Um, and with the bolts, it's generally different regions. Uh, that two bolt chair that was pretty much used on Western Region um, GWR and obviously BR Western. Um, pretty much all until it changed to flat bottom rail. So that's if you sort of run in GWR. The three bolt chairs, these were BR period. Um, also used by a few other companies like the it's the London North Western Railway. Um, a bit of the LMS use these as well, uh, and LNER. And then you get four bolt chairs, which are mainly used by the Midland Railway Company. I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a rivet counter by any means. I'm just just passing on the information that I've found out over the years. So. So I'd let you know that little bit of information. So I'm using three bolt because I think I'm going to base mine in the sort of LMS region, probably just before BR takes over. You know, sort of thirties, I think. Um, but with anything, like I said, I'm not a rivet counter. I'll still run what I like anyway. But that's that. So, this is where things get a bit interesting. Well, I say interesting, a bit more awkward. You see on these chairs, you have a little bit sticking out on one side. I don't know if you can really see that very well. Um, it's on the bottom of this one. And it's on, is it? it's on the bottom of this one as well. It's, I say it might be a bit difficult to see, but that little bit, bit sticking out is to represent the key. And the key is the bit that wedges in between the chair and the rail, which hold hold the rail firm, basically. So, what you'd normally do is have that key facing a certain way. So if you were travelling that way, and that it was like a, a one way only line sort of thing like on the double track main line so say you're travelling that way the key would also be on this side so that as the train goes over the track and it tries to push the rail that way that key would stay in there and hold it firm whereas if the key was on the other side it would probably just fall out and then the rail would you know, come loose and all sorts so that's the way they normally work. On single track lines, like I'm having, what you find is they alternate, so that um, some would hold it if it's going one way and some would hold it if it's going the other way. And then sometimes you might find a few in, in succession that are the same way because if they keep falling out, the rail gangs would just put it on the other side and pop your uncle. So that's pretty much about how keys work. So one last thing with the chairs is that at the end of a section of rail, so say here, um, the chairs would always sort of face opposite. Like can't really show you, but you know, one that way and then one that way um, to give enough space for the fish plate to sit in. So, prime example, um, I don't know if I can show you on here, I don't know if it'll pick it up or not, but you can see that one facing that one, that way, where that one faces that way. So, as the two rails join, you've got space, just enough space for that fish plate there to sort of sit in. So. That's the other thing to remember with them. So, the next job, um, as you can see, I sort of made a bit of a start while I had a bit of a distraction, um, is to thread these on. Obviously, threading them on 
the crap way and there's about 25 for each side each little section of track for each side so 50 in total <laughs> just for one little bit like that uh, this is where the kind of tedious task sort of comes in so and just remember with these keys as well they will sit on the outside of the rail so and the inside is just basically non-keyed so all we do with this is just we get some of these chairs and you find the one you want so the last one I put on faces that way so I want the faces sort of this way towards me so all I do is just break one off. And like I said, these are absolutely tiny, <laughs> and I, I guarantee you, about half of them end up on the floor. Some of them end up broken as you try and thread them on. So all I do with the with the point there, with the nice sort of chopping edge, is just try and thread it on, and then thread it down. And this is where filing the rail. And I've put it on the wrong way around, haven't I? I have indeed. I'll take that one off. <laughs> it all goes wrong on camera. Ooh. So, like I say, just thread it on the correct way. And then just make sure that the bottom of, of the plastic there is, hasn't split. Because sometimes they do. And then it really doesn't really hold it very well. So, you do that and slide it along. And then that's, that's another one on. So I'm going to do this about another, yeah, about another 18 times for this bit of rail. Then I'll do the same for that one, and then I'll come back and show you uh, getting it all down on this. One other thing to remember as well, I thought I'd just mention this because I completely forgot about it. But like, if you're doing a pretty straightish bit like this, um, it's not a problem just to thread the chairs onto the rail. But if you're doing a curve then before you start threading the chairs on what you want to do is get the bit of rail and just run it through your fingers while trying to slightly uh, curve it at the same time and then sort of just offer it up to the template and then just sort of see because what you want to do is you don't have to keep it bang on but you want to try and make it as close as possible so that the rail is just naturally bent and so that all those little plastic chairs aren't trying to force a bit of metal rail that wants to be straight to be curved so it just sort of helps with the track work so I thought I'd just mention that one right so that's 25 chairs threaded on to each of those rails now what I've done is just laid it alongside um, this bit of track work here because I've this is where my dropper wires are going to go it's probably the only place I can put it on, on that side of the layout because I've got a beam in the way so it's been right at the end so what I've done is I've moved one chair for, for here as far along as I, can, as I can and then the rest is sort of more over that way and I've just used a, a pencil just to mark on roughly where to put it and this is why I've made it you know, the rail a bit longer because what I'll do is I'll solder that on and it doesn't matter if I, if I just miss that mark by you know, a few millimetres or whatever it, it doesn't matter because I've got some room to play so what I'm going to do now is attach two dropper wires make sure I'm putting the right colour dropper wire on the right side um, and for that I'm using if I can find it I'll show you it uh, I've got so much of a mess in there I don't know where anything is No, I can't find it at the minute. But all I've used is some thin solid core wire. Um, the reason why I've gone solid core is it's just a bit easier to solder it directly onto the rail. So I, I strip a, a good bit of it and just put a little sort of like kink, sort of like an L shape on the end. And then I'll use a file on the bottom of the rail just to, just to scuff that. Um, and tin it and then I'll solder it on onto there and then I, what I could do is thread the thread the uh, 
the wire, drop a wire through the holes and then get to lay in the rest of the track there. So I won't show you that bit I don't think because lots of people can show you how to do a bit of soldering. It's not that difficult. So I'll go do that and then I'll come back to you and show you hopefully laying the rail down. Okay so what I've done now as you can see I've threaded all the chairs on. I um, can't remember whether I mentioned that in the last part or not. But threaded them on and I've soldered a bit of drop of wire to each one. Not the neatest soldering but I don't think you'll notice it too much once it's all ballasted and weathered and everything. So all I'm going to do now is thread one of these through which I'll go for the, the blue one which is for my detection I'm just going to thread it through a hole in the cork that I made previously and just just in case of threading it through till you get to the, the base there it is so once it's down low so now the next job is to glue these chairs onto the sleepers and what you have to do here is try and glue them down and try and match up the pattern from the rail on the, uh, on the template there and try and get it to match and sort of be a nice kind of smooth sort of you know not have it sort of wobbling out too much so that's that's the difficult part but um I'll give that a go now so you start with like I say you start with one side I use this which is um butanone which what it does is it melts the uh, plastic and and sort of a little bit and glues it onto the thing and it this stuff does stink a little bit so <laughs> so first of all sometimes it's easier using like a pair of uh, tweezers or something and just sort of nudge the chairs along uh, what I find also quite useful to do is try and just roughly move all the others so they're roughly in the right place beforehand. This means you ain't gonna mess about trying to do it later and try and lift the rail up as you've already stuck some down so it just makes things a little bit easier. So I'll just do this bit now. Of course, this is where if you make a mistake and you <laughs> you ping one of them off, then it's a a bit of a nightmare to put it right. But as you can see, it's roughly roughly right there. So, like I say, I'll start with this this end one, um, and I'll stick this one down. Okay, in there. It's all about trying to just get the uh, get the chair right in the correct place and then put a little bit of butanone on, on the on the brush and then just dab it around the chair and then just hold it down for hold it down quite firm for I don't know, about 10 to 20 seconds or so and then it should have like pretty much stuck down So as you're doing this, you gotta make sure, like I say, that the keys are on the outside of the rail and not on the inside. Otherwise, you might have a little bit of problem with running later. Um, I know some companies apparently did have the, the keys on the inside, but typically, um, like the NER Northeastern Railway, apparently did. So I heard. So, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. So then, what the best idea I think is is to do the other end. So then both ends are on 
right where you want them. Hold it down. And this way you can sort of, both ends are now stuck down and you can just manipulate in between and get, get it spot on. So I'll do this, uh, I'll finish doing this rail and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we do the, ne the next bit of rail. Okay, so as you can see I've stuck that side down now and to be honest with you, it doesn't look too bad actually and it follows the, uh, the line pretty well. So, the next thing I have to do is do the other rail. Now, to do the other rail we have to use these things called, um, well, track gauges. Um, I can get these different ones. These are um, two-point track gauges. So the rail just sits in, in that slot there and that slot there. And you use that to sort of get the gauge right. You also have these three-point ones as well. And these can be used for straight track, but they can, they're also used for tight curves because what they do is you put the two outer prongs on the outside of a curve I believe and then you put the centre one on the inside and that gives you a bit of uh, gauge widening so that helps you know open up your curves a little bit so that the trains can navigate around it um, Double O track has this built in anyway, and that's why you've got a lot of side play. I'm going to be going with 4SF, um, also known as Double OSF, which is stand, the SF stands for super fine. Um, but I'll do another video on that a lot later, probably once I've got a full loop complete, which will still probably be a while if I'm honest. But anyway, I'll thread this other bit of track in, and then I'll show you me going about doing that. Okay, so I've stuck both ends on, and that was quite simply done by, like I say, just putting those track gauges on the rail, and then sticking it on with butanone. You can, like I say, just use this, and hold it on like that, and what it does, like I say, is it just it gives you your track gauge, so then you can just, when your chairs are in the right position, you just... There we go. Just stick some butanone on, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And hold it down. These are actually a bit. These three point ones a bit easier for holding the actual rail down. But yeah, it's just a simple case of just running through it like this. And that's pretty much all there is to making plain track. Um, once done, you just chop the ends off and stick it down or whatever. So there you have it, the finished article. Um, as you can see it looks pretty neat and tidy. Um, the best thing with this method as well is that if you ever get anything wrong all you need to do is slide the scalpel under those chairs and they'll lift straight off and then you can just re-stick them down. The only other thing left to do, which I won't be doing yet anyway, is these fish plates, which you might be able to just tell. I don't know whether it's going to pick it up on camera or not. But there's your four bolt fish plates, and they go between each section, which is generally about 25 sleepers long. So, what I'll be doing next is making sure I paint these up as well as paint this up. Um, that's done just by masking off all the timber and then I'll just with the airbrush I'll, I'll give it a coat of primer and then probably do some track grime maybe some rust I'm not quite sure on the colours yet um, but literally that is the only other thing I'll, I'll be doing to this and I won't show you that because that's just painting so it's not too bad but um, yeah oh, as you can see I've, got, I've had a few that have lifted up so I'll just re-stick them down um, nice and easy. So that's it for this uh, 
track making series for now. Um, I might do another one when I make a point, just to sort of see what's involved in that. Um, but otherwise, I'll just actually just crack on with making track work because I've got a lot to do. So thanks for watching. Um, hope you found it interesting, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.